सो वेलकम टू वागतोर बिहाइंड मी सम वर्क गोइंग ऑन हियर एज यूजल इन दिस पार्ट्स ऑफ गोवा इट्स फेब्ररी टू so we are just walking to the road along to the beach okay nice view from here i guess you can see it up there is the shapura fort in colonial times this used to be the northern boundary of <laughs> today just another tourist destination filled with a lot of history but uh, most of the visitors here would not know selfie spot would not know would not care much about the place and what's what's gone into making it so these rocks are supposed to be extremely old nice view from here a bit windy so you can expect some noise in the recording i guess this is the northern end of bardes taluka bardes taluka meaning sub district beyond it is perne it's uh, where the portuguese territory is in the 18th century and after they acquired more from more land i almost said conquest so they acquired more land than the odd fishing boat or two there's hardly any fishing left because tourism is faster money and everyone wants to jump in there my first memories of this place this place meaning anjuna the village the inhabited village next to it shahura bagator maybe go back to the early 70s when i was around 10 and uh, we would visit my uncle's friends who had come moved in from africa to this place and uh, visit them at their home and talk to them and meet them and uh, it was quite an experience then it was a totally different world after that college picnics here i remember one picnic where where we came around and uh, we were sitting maybe exactly on the same spots as uh, as 17 year olds so that was fun the place has changed a lot this is the this is the Hippy capital of Goa. If you want to put it that way, hippy in the sense that uh, they are what my friend Flavian Dias, the late Flavian Dias, journalist of the Guardian, would probably call synthetic hippies because they are not the hippies of the original lot, the old generation, but they are like middle class westerners playing the role of hippies. A whole lot of Indian tourists, uh, young, upwardly mobile, maybe techies, I think a lot who are also. coming here for water sports to visit the beach and uh, 
quote unquote recreational drugs and hippie culture. So this is like the you know, hippie capital, the drug capital of, of Goa. You find a lot of uh, nefarious activities going on here, which, are, which is never spoken about. So politicians, many politicians would uh, be connected with all these things. So they are left to have their own say as long as they don't bother too much and things like that and uh, you know, deliver the votes for them when they need it. So today the place has changed a lot. As we are going by, if, if the camera stays on and if it's not too noisy, I'll probably show you some of the real estate constructions coming up there. So a lot of politicians have their finger in the real estate file. It's big money, fast money. And if you have your influence and if you can bend the laws, that's even faster. Okay, uh, there, there is a lot of uh, diverse food, food cultures coming up here. water sports I remember the place because of a few things uh, Fernandez did a book on Arjuna and we photographed the whole village quite quite intensely so we went all across the place and you know up and down the small hillocks and the rocks and fields and all those places so that was Dominic's book on Arjuna called the village Goa People coming in, going out, mostly tourists would be in the profile of 30 plus or thereabouts. Young Indian couples are not there. And uh, yeah, they follow that profile for some reason. In this area at least. So Dominic's book was one thing and the other thing was uh, of our authors from the region who is who was called Dr. Teresa Albuquerque, a historian who wrote history in a very accessible, simple, easy to follow format. She happened to be the sister of the late uh, prominent Indian editor Frank Morais from Santa Cruz in Goa. So of course she didn't make much of it. And, uh, I visited her house and I quite able to finalize books to discuss her plans and some rough edits and all that. He passed away unfortunately a few years back. He's written a lot of books on Anjuna. She has a book on Anjuna. She has a book on some prominent people of Anjuna. Pasquale de Mello, father of our internet friend Tim de Mello. Pasquale de Mello, MD, member of the British Empire. And, uh, so, in both of which areas she lived in was part of or hailed from. All these kind of things. A lot of wind, windy day, sunny day. Yeah, so that. Like me, he believed a lot in documenting every aspect of it. I think uh, the My claim to fame is that I actually got an interview with him in a noisy crowded restaurant when he was most reluctant to do it. So that's Joel. He, he was from he was from Asagam, which is another village. In now, now the point I want to make actually two points. One is that the colonial history of Goa is not understood or deliberately misunderstood. So, this is shown as the bastardized parts of Goa, which, uh, which kind of, you know, uh, compromised with the Portuguese and those kind of things, whereas, whereas they were less patriotic and almost anti national, denationalized, and whatever. Body. But that kind of uh, overlooks the colonial reality that uh, Goa went through. It's a very complex subject. Uh, probably I'm not able to handle it. But, uh, at least not in the five. Maybe even if I got more time, no. But uh, you know, the, 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 
पोर्चुगीज कॉलोनियल स्टोरी इन गोवा इट्स हाई पॉइंट्स इट्स लो पॉइंट्स इट्स पॉजिटिव इट्स नेगेटिव ये सेव पॉजिटिव I'm sure one day it would. I hope I live to see that day. Uh, it's a complex. So these these are some areas which underwent colonialism very deeply. Today it's almost as if the the, the quote unquote post colonial is celebrating that that accident of history and cashing in on the greatness, uh, exoticness, exotic, exoticity. large numbers here the this thing is in and this is to see that you are quite the uh, so that's that's the first thing the second aspect is uh, the second aspect actually is the goan migration story so it's always suggested almost suggested that uh, this tiny minority in goa maybe a privileged minority who got who got it easy and uh, who were privileged and pampered lot during colonial rule and all which which is not exactly true actually it's quite far from the truth because uh, till the 1920s almost till 1920s catholics were the majority of goa and uh, you know i'm not going into the issue of uh, what it says about religious conversions and whether it was successful and all that's a totally different debate but uh, they were a the majority then they they moved out to such large numbers so they lost their majority because of migration because of out migration in migration came only much there were trickles of in migration many of the prominent uh, families from goa are are in migrants still today many of the prominent political families are in migrants but uh, that's a different story uh, so the catholics moved out in large numbers to british india which included bombay calcutta chennai madras bangalore karachi in a in a significant manner uh, they moved to british east africa and uh, and later on in the 60s and 70s to the to the persian gulf to the arabian gulf so that was that's a story of migration to which is connected the 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 relative affluence of these parts of goa which are also more migrant more catholic and and more affluent uh, you can see it in the houses you can see it in the money invested here uh, the un, untold part of the story is that as they were outside in a quote and quote post liberation context uh, the the camel entered the tent so to speak and they 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 lost they lost out in a big way and many of and that comes across in the discourse of you know uh, part of catholic goa today the sense of loss the sense of uh, you know feeling deprived of what they rightfully own you had tenancy laws you had uh, munkar laws in the 60s 70s which actually uh, deprived them of land resources then you had official language acts in the 80s and uh, medium of instruction laws in the rules laws in the 90s that deprived them of their uh, cultural uh, access to their cultural languages and uh, you had uh, you know developments in the in the newspaper industry things like that which may uh, which ensured that languages like uh, portuguese were effectively shut down and it's, it's it's a complex story waiting to be told so anyway we'll keep that for some other day but uh, in the meanwhile we'll head back to 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 where we came from you'll see some of the some of the places along the way so so right on the hill there is the fort you can see it extending quite a bit beyond this coconut tree quite a bit so the road to the fort is a uh, is a bit to the north and there's a lot of building and construction come up there some of which blocks almost blocks the access so these are your food carts go and food carts 
small home run business meal cart established 2021 so real estate food 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 variety indian tourist i love goa t-shirts roadside hawkers rent a bike tender coconuts delhi cars wait for four hours oops So when I came, there was some work going on here, but now it seems to have stopped. There's construction all over the place, unrecognizably so. We put on our mask, and we'll continue the ride. <laughs> 